Okay, in this video, I'm going to begin with, I suppose, chapter number three by talking about the basics of projectile analysis. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you what sort of um, what sort of diagrams you'll be drawing. So first of all, as normal, we have our x and y axis, making our Cartesian plane or our x y plane, and this corresponds to the we'll say a two D world, where this is the ground and this is the height, the ground in one direction. Obviously, we're not dealing with a three dimensional world where you might have a a z-axis like that, and which would be able to describe everything around us. So we're just dealing with a two-dimensional world. All right. So in our two-dimensional world, we have uh, two different distances. Obviously, one is along the ground, and one is from the uh, we we'll say the height. Now, of course, we don't really need a negative height because we can't go below the ground. So essentially, what we have is uh, our x-y plane like that. So we said that there are in projectile equations we're talking uh, the only acceleration that we're going to talk about is gravity, which we will call g, and its value is approximately so that 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 symbol there is approximately 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's gravity, and that's the only acceleration. The question is, what direction does gravity act? Gravity acts in the negative y direction. Or you could say the gravity acts in the uh, gravity acts in the negative j hat direction as well. If you're talking about unit vectors, that's the only way it acts. So, what does that mean? What does that imply? Well, first of all, it implies that gravity does not affect anything at all, moving in the uh, the x-axis. So it won't slow something. To, if something is literally just moving to the right, we'll say, in the x-axis, it will not be affected whatsoever. In other words, being slowed, up, slowed down or sped up by gravity. However, if it's moving in any way whatsoever in the y, so it might be moving vertical or something like that, horizontal or like 45 degree angle, then some component of that will be in the y axis and therefore gravity will affect it. So gravity only affects something that has got a height. That's it. So the next thing is well, if we're talking about heights, what sort of other things are we talking about? Now, if you remember from chapter 2, when we're talking about constant acceleration, we had the UVAST formula, we had UV, A, S, and we also had T. So, now the thing is, this time we have two dimensions. We have, let's say, the X dimension, and we have the Y dimension. So in order to be able to work out everything to do with these, we need to know, uh, we need to do a UVAST for both. So we need to know, for example, the X, the, the, the position, how far is it from the origin in the X, and how far uh, above the origin is it in the Y. So for that reason, we use subscripts. So say this is the letter A, then A sub X would be like that, subscript X, or A superscript B would be like that. All right, so what it's, it's kind of, it's generally accepted that you use subscripts. So you have S sub X, S sub Y, T sub Y, T sub X, A sub X, A sub Y, V sub Y, U sub Y, uh, U sub X, and V sub X like that. Now the thing is, in many cases, that's actually that's irrelevant because you'll be using your unit vectors. So of course, i hat will do not donate the fact that you're talking about the x-axis, and j hat will donate the fact that you're talking about the y-axis. Now, if you're not familiar with unit vectors, look at my video from chapter one on unit vectors, and that'll explain that hopefully fully for you. So, in our constant acceleration questions in chapter two, we had the UVAST formula. So we had v squared is equal to u squared plus two a s s is equal to u plus v over 2 times t s is equal to ut plus a half a t squared and v is equal to u plus a t they are the, uh, the, they are the formula that we use so the way this is going to work is because we're talking about constant acceleration we're saying that g although it, it varies uh, in general we're going to say that it's constant and approximately 9.8 so for that reason, we have constant acceleration, and we can use these four formula here like that. So what we'll do is we'll have to apply each of these four formula to the y-axis, or the j-hat dimension, and the x-axis, or the, the i-hat dimension, separately. And with those, that'll give us all the, the different bits we need to know. So how would you do this? Well, the first thing is we note that the acceleration in the y-direction is g, or, now remember I said, if you're using variables, you leave them positive, or you could say minus 9.8. Why is it minus? Well, look, 
we defined a plus y is upwards like that. If we defined negative y this way, well then it would be plus 9.8. But we don't, and there's no particular reason, it's just that it's, it's just convention not to do that. Next, is there any acceleration in the x-axis? And I've told you that the only acceleration is gravity. Gravity only acts on something moving in height, therefore the acceleration along the x-axis is zero. However, of course, if something had an engine or was being propelled in some way, well, then it would have an acceleration. But we won't be dealing with that. So, thereafter, we have our normal things, the initial speed, the final speed, the initial speed, the final speed, the two distances, and the two times. So, let's draw a basic projectile. Like that. It's customary to draw, we'll say, the, uh, the, initial, um, the initial speed vector like that. And sometimes it's tr you draw the final speed vector like this. And that's generally how you, t how you draw your diagrams. In, adi in addition to that, you will, you will uh, you'll define how gravity goes. So you'll say this is g. You'll define your unit vectors i hat and j hat like that. Uh, is there anything else you'll define? No, uh, that, that's pretty much it. Now remember, of course, s sub x is this distance here. The distance on the, uh, the x-axis. And s sub y would be this this the the height we'll say the height above ground and s sub x is the the distance away from the the origin again so um I think that that's pretty much it for for the basics and uh, let me think is there anything else I'm just gonna have a look at the book here because I'd like to be able to work with the book so just bear with me for a moment there now. No, I think that's, that's pretty much it. I'm, ha I'm happy enough with that. So after this, we're going to begin doing some questions. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.